เจ้าเ
Good morning and welcome to St. George Episcopal Church, our live face, uh, Facebook live stream. I am the Reverend Susan Burnham. We are here in San Antonio, and I'd like to welcome you to our Holy Eucharist Rite to Worship Service. You can find a bulletin online in the comments or on our webpage. You can also find a Book of Common Prayer online at www.bcponline.org. So feel free to follow along. Our uh, worship begins on page 355, but first we will sing our opening hymn, The Church is One Foundation, on page 525 of the hymnal. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, 
he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning can be found on page 794 of the Book of Common Prayer. It is Psalm 139. We will read verses 1 through 11 and 22, 23. Page 794, Psalm 139, 1 through 11 and 22 and 23. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the crave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any witness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. 
for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The Word of the Lord. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. 
So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. And the slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parables of the wheat of the field. And he said, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. presence of the Lord is in this place, in your place, in all the places of the world. Amen. So I've been thinking about parables um, because we seem to be in uh, a time of parables in our electionary. And I've been reading a book by Amy Jill Levine short stories uh, of Jesus. And she talks about the parables in, in ways that um, helps to understand or at least to see them in a different light, to see them in uh, the ways that possibly Jesus' first century listeners would have heard those stories. And she talks much about the, the, the provocative nature of these stories and how the telling of these stories would, would catch the listeners up and they would, they would begin to listen and to hear some truths. Matthew's Gospel last week and this week, uh, Matthew gives us an interpretation of the parable. 
But it's Matthew's interpretation of the parable. Matthew is having Jesus explain what the parable is and turns it more from par parable, parable to allegory. But I wonder what it must have been like to hear this parable of the wheat and the weeds as a first century listener. I don't think that there would have been any um, confusion about planting wheat and then the presence of weeds. I know that in my gardening, uh, whether I'm uh, gardening uh, vegetables or whether I'm just putting flowers in the ground, I am constantly fighting weeds. Constantly. So that's not very surprising in this parable. But the parable talks about, Jesus tells the story that someone comes in the night and plants weed seeds. Now that's a little different. That's a little different. And then, and then we get this, this response by, by uh, those around in the story. That the response of the story is, well then let us go up and pull up the weeds so they don't choke out. The good stuff. And here's, here's the part that's maybe a little bit provocative and shocking. Here's the part that maybe would have caught up his listeners a little short. No. Let the weeds grow alongside the wheat. Let the weeds grow? Let them grow? Really? Really? Really, Jesus? I don't know about you, but, but if someone were to give me that advice uh, about my garden, I would probably say, oh, yeah, thank you, and ask somebody else's advice. But Jesus tells his parable, and he says, let the weeds be. Let the weeds be until the wheat and the weeds grow into all of their fullness and the wheat begin to bear fruit and the weeds do what they're doing, which is usually not much. And then, and then, the two can be separated. To what can we compare pulling weeds in our lives? As I think about that, I think about pulling weeds as, as sort of this knee-jerk reaction. That I have this reaction and I, I see something, I see the weeds, and I'm going to go do something about it right now. I'm going to react to the weed. I'm not going to respond. And those two things are different. When I react, I just do the first thing that comes to my mind. To plan a response is just that. To plan, to think, to seek guidance, to seek wisdom. Because in the pulling of the weed, whatever it is, I can do more damage if I react. I can thwart God's plan if I react. So what might we do when we see weeds in our lives? I think the first thing we can do is to, to push the pause button. To simply pause and ask ourselves, What's wrong here? Something is, something is wrong. What is it? What is it that troubles my mind? What is it that troubles my heart? What is it that troubles my spirit? What about what I'm witnessing grabs my attention? And then my next step would be to stay paused and ask myself, what does God want me to know? Where should I go to seek 
good and godly wisdom. The scriptures, the history, the tradition of the church, writings of the church, hymnody. What is God saying to me in this troubling, weedy moment? And after spending some time staying paused, perhaps even staying paused and asking those questions with other fellow Christians, then it's time to unpause by asking ourselves, what is God calling me specifically to do? What is God calling me specifically to do? about this particular weed. And then to join with others who've also been called and go to the business of gathering weeds. What are the weeds in your world? What are the weeds in our world? What are the weeds even in the church? Because you can't have a garden without weeds. I've tried. So what are the weeds that we might see in the world? Well, in these days, some of the weeds that we see are systemic racism. We're dealing with a pandemic that... Um, continues to get worse. We're dealing with a polarized, broken, and ineffective government. Leaders that lack vision. We lack moral leadership at so many different levels in our world. Some other weeds that we have in the world and in the church are the treatment of women and the role of women in leadership in the church. And some other weeds that we have in the church are the inclusion as part of the family and the leadership of the church of our LGBT Q brothers and sisters. I can go on and on with the weeds that are in the world and in the church that need to get pulled. But I can't react, and nor can you. We have to pause and ask ourselves, what is wrong? What is it that is grabbing our attention in these places? What does God want me to know? What is God saying to me through the scriptures, through the church, through my brothers and sisters in Christ? And what is God calling me specifically to do? And more importantly, when? When? Have we paused long enough? Have we listened to God through scripture, prayer, and community conversation? Are we clear about God's plan for reconciliation and renewal in His world? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In a speech given at the National Cathedral in March of 1968 entitled Remaining Awake Through a Great Revolution, uttered these words, We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. It bends towards justice. The provocative power of this parable is its call for you and for me, for all Christ followers, for the church to wake up and pay attention 
to God's insistent inbreaking of the kingdom, the reign of God, here and now. Our God does not want us focusing on our worldly escape plan. The kingdom of God is not some future in the by and by. God calls us to be here, right now, in this moment of history. Ready to partner with our sisters and brothers to partner with the one true God of power and life in establishing a world that is fashioned in the image of God, in the image of the life-giving love of Jesus. One of, the great, one of the great lines that I've ever heard, one of the great terms I've ever heard is, is the scandal of particularity. The scandal of particularity is something that academics talk about when they talk about how God in the Scriptures works at particular moments in history with particular people in history to embody the vision of the salvation of the world, the making of the world right. A particular moment in history, a few thousand years ago, in a particular place, the Middle East, through a particular people, the Jews, out of whom comes a particular uh, Jesus through whom the salvation of the world is accomplished. And Jesus continues to lead us in this, in this scandal of particularity by calling you and me, all of us, as individuals and as communities, to work to bring the kingdom of heaven to this moment to announce that the kingdom of heaven is near and it's here and let's talk about how we live in the kingdom of heaven let's talk about how God's people relate to one another in the kingdom of heaven let's talk about what God desires for the whole of creation in the kingdom of heaven. What might this world look like if we allowed Jesus to be sovereign and lay down all of those earthly, worldly crowns at his feet? Well, it's not an easy task. It's not an easy task. But like Jacob in that Old Testament lesson, we can take some comfort in the truth that our current state of discomfort, that state of discomfort is the place where God enters the world. Surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this moment in history. Surely the Lord is in our hearts and minds. Surely the Lord is in these little packets of data that are flying back and forth from this phone camera to your computer screen and beyond. Surely the Lord is in this place. And we did not know it. Well, sisters and brothers, now we know it. Now we know it. And the question becomes, what shall we do individually and as a community to join God's purpose in redeeming and renewing the world? If you have a prayer book, I want you to put a bookmark 
on page 832. Down at the bottom of that, of that page, page 832, there is a prayer that's entitled The Prayer of Self-Dedication. I'm going to invite you to undertake a spiritual discipline for a season. I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer daily. And it goes like this. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to Thee. So guide our minds so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly thine, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358. I invite you to say this with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift our prayers to God, who knows our necessities before we ask and rejoices in our asking as we respond, Hear us, good Lord. That judges, attorneys, and juries may be fair and just in their dealings with those who come before them, relying on the law and legal precedents and weighing their decisions with compassion and forbearance, let us pray. Hear us, Lord. That the church may welcome young adults into its life, inviting them into positions of responsibility and leadership, listening to their ideas and joining with them in building for the future. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. That God's will may break through the hardened surfaces of those who release their despair through violence, abuse, gang membership, vengeful societies and terrorist organizations so that they may be changed into the architects of a peaceful and prosperous world, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. That the hope of the poor be not in vain and those with a troubled spirit be not forgotten, but assisted through the generosity of those whose hearts are fertile soil in which the ministry Christ bears much fruit. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord, that the leaders of the nations may usher in the peace of God's reign. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord, that all who have returned to the dust may be raised to the glory of everlasting life. 
let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. In the light that knows no setting of the sun, let us continue our prayers. On this day, we lift up all of those who have tested positive for COVID-19. We offer prayers for those who await word on testing for themselves or loved ones. We pray for the hurting, the lonely, the anxious, the fearful, those who suffer from addiction or mental health disorders, for students and parents, for educators, for our civic leaders and health experts, for those who are facing unemployment, for those who are on very limited resources. We pray for those who suffer the evils of systemic racism and for those who advocate for change, for those who've suffered injury or death in the struggle, for those who pray and work for racial reconciliation. We pray for those who put themselves in harm's way, especially our first responders, police officers, firefighters, EMT professionals, and members of our military for medical and health professionals, for those who continue to stock grocery shelves and do other essential work that sustains our lives in these difficult days. We also pray for Mike, Sandy, Zoe, Rhonda, Glenn, Janie, Matthew, Michelle, Christelle, Diana, Baby Mona, Denise, Jerry, Sandy, David, Alice, Sarah, Bill, Carmelina, Trevor, Sean, Jeff, Stephen, Christian, Denise, Sylvia, Faye, Frank, Mrs. Martinez, Molly, Kate, Kevin, Efren, David, Sarah, the Sitch family, Jennifer, Father Bruce, Charlotte, Francis, Chris, Florence, Nancy, Susie, Randy and family, Kelly, Karen, Roberto, Lee. On this day, we pray for the repose of the souls of Nancy Kish, Rosinda Rios Burns, Sammy Rodriguez Womack, Barry Garbett. We also pray for those who mourn Jen, Greg, Larry, Gabriel, Noah, Lisette, Carl, Pauline. We also pray for all of those who are in leadership, our staff, and our wider St. George community. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for all of those who've been healed from COVID-19. We give thanks for Ephraim's healing. We offer prayers for those who have birthdays today or this week. Michael Angeloni, Sienna Crawford, Mike Holmes, Efren Maldonado, Greta Sullivan, Catherine Carr, Craig Loeffler, Randall Stivers, Bob Hayes, Pearson Sunberg, Kevin Black, and Greg Hall. And we also give thanks for those who have wedding anniversaries this week for Abelia and Bob Hayes. 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Hang on. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the, to the glory, glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everybody. All right. Isn't it great? Uh, live TV. This is, this is kind of like every Sunday we do this live like this. It's like uh, Easter and Christmas Eve where I bring the kids up and I, I do the kids sermon with all those kids in there. And you never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, it's live. Uh, and so these little guys didn't make it all the way through the service. Oh, well. Uh, really glad that you're here. And... Uh, and really uh, hope that you had an opportunity to get in early enough to uh, check out some of the announcements on the front end from, that are from the East Pier. But I think we have a video announcement, and we're going to do that right now. Good morning, everyone. And I am so glad that we are all able to worship together this morning at St. George. I am Taylor Brown. I am the Director of Youth Ministries here. And most of y'all know me as that, that I am the youth director. And I'm sure that y'all have seen pictures of me having Jello flung at my head. Um, it is a job that I absolutely adore doing. We do a lot of fun stuff with the youth and youth ministry. But I'm here today to talk about there's another aspect of what we get to do here at St. George. I'm also a licensed professional counselor. And so one of the things that we're now doing at St. George is we have updated our care page. I think there will be a link to that. You can just simply go to our St. George Church webpage, click on the care link, and it will take you to all of the amazing things that we are doing in regard to care at St. George. So everything from, from mental health care, everything to where to find a counselor, you can reach out to me and and that's something that if you are needing to find resources, meet with a counselor, anything like that, reach out to me. We also have continued great pastoral care resources with Marilyn. We have all of these great things that you can simply just go check it out virtually. So many great links to resources. So I wanted to let you know about some of the new fantastic things that we are doing. So while you normally know me as someone who is doing some weird and wacky things with our youth ministry. I'm also here to provide services in the mental health arena. So you can go to St. George, our website. You can click on the care page and find out all of our new resources that we have just uploaded in the last week. So check that out. Also, you can go to our eSphere. Please look at our eSphere. There's so many really important things. That is our hub. And so if you don't have the eSphere, if you're not getting that in your email, there will be a link in the Facebook comments that you can click there, sign up. Um, you can also click on one of the links in the Facebook comments because that will take you directly to this week's eSphere. So check that out. Go to our website. We're still doing all of the great stuff for kids. We have our, non -pre our no prep Bible study. We have other great Bible studies going on. We have great stuff for youth. For adults, we're going to be getting ready to do our worship in the arts virtually. All of these things are happening. We have some really amazing things going on at St. George. Even though we're not able to physically meet together, we are still able to be together virtually. 
be together in prayer, be together in spirit. And so I hope that you join with us and, and continue to do these incredible things that we're all joining in and doing together. And I hope that you continue to have a wonderful week and a wonderful morning and see you soon. Thanks. Bye everyone. <clears throat> All right. Uh, in the comment section of uh, this broadcast this morning, you'll see all the links for eSpear and for uh, all kinds of information. eSpear is going to be your hub of information. Please, please, please check that out when it comes out every Friday afternoon. And you'll also find in there the a link to Tithely so that if you so you can make your offering either online through Tithely or you know you can find you can also mail it in if, if that's your preference. Our offertory sentence is from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will refresh you.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. We continue with the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer B, which is found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you've made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. George and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A spiritual communion is a personal devotion that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Blessed Sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
join me in our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is true. Render no one evil for evil. Support the weak, strengthen the faint-hearted, help the afflicted. Love and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Keep you safe, make you strong this day and every day of your life. Amen. To love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Y'all take care. Have a good week. See ya. God bless you.